A team that has recently lost to a bunch of kids in the Carabao Cup final and are now labelled the Blue Billion Pound Bottle Jobs. A team that has actually won the Champions League as recent as 2021. As you've probably guessed, today's rebuild is on Chelsea Football Club. Now, this is going to be a five-year rebuild. Hopefully, we can take Chelsea back to being domestic and European giants. Let's jump straight into the tactics and let's have a look what we're running for this first season with Chelsea. Before we jump into the tactic, I'd just like to say we are on a mission to get 100 subs by the end of March. So if you do like the video, please make sure to subscribe, leave a like rating, get yourselves in the comments to see who you want to see a rebuild on in future videos. Let's jump straight into this tactic. If you've watched the channel before, you should know by now that we are 423 on Merchants when it comes to Football Manager and doing these rebuilds. So as you can see, in the first season with Chelsea, this is the tactic that we are running. On the right hand side of defence, we do have a complete wing back on attack. On the left hand side, we have an inverted wing back on support. The two centre backs are ball playing defenders on defensive. Moving into the midfield, we have a ball winning midfielder on support and a Mazawa on support as well. The two wingers are inverted forwards, both on attack. The attacking midfielder is just your generic attacking midfielder on support. And the striker is a pressing forward on attack. In terms of the tactic itself, we do have a positive mentality in possession. You can see that the attacking width is actually fairly wide. We do pass into space on the approach play and play out of defence. The passing directness is shorter with a higher tempo as well. We do want the ball to be worked into the box and we are running at the defence. In terms of in transition, you can see we counter press when possession has been lost and when we've won possession, we do counter as well. We want the goalkeeper to distribute the ball quickly and distribute it to the centre backs and full backs. And in terms of outer possession, you can see that we have the higher defensive line. We have that high press as well, triggering that press much more often and preventing the short goalkeeper distribution. So we're going to sim the rest of this first season now, as we didn't make any transfers in the first season. But see how we've done at the end of the season and see how we've done in those domestic cups. The first thing that we're going to look at at the end of the season then is this data hub. And let's see how the tactic has done for us. So when we look at goals per game, 2.16 goals per game. In terms of expected goals against, 1.52 and conceded per game is 1.71. So we need to do some work on the tactic in the defensive side of things. Shots per game, 13.1 with 42% with shots on target and an 87.84 pass completion ratio as well. So when it comes to goals per game and the pass completion, I'm quite happy with that. But the defensive side of things, when it comes to this tactic, definitely needs work. So we're going to change that tactic in season two. But let's have a look at the Premier League and see how we've done in season number one. Taking a look then at the Premier League table at the end of the first season. And as you can see, we do secure that seventh spot with Chelsea, securing that Europa Conference League spot as well. Looking at the table, we are actually nearly 40 points off champions Manchester City. So we have a lot of work to do to make up ground on them next season. If we take a look at the stats, as you can see, most goals we do feature there in fourth with 82 goals across 38 games. We also feature in the most possession category as well in sixth place with 56% possession. So not a bad first season. We didn't really make any signings to strengthen that squad in the first season as we didn't really have a transfer budget either let's have a look at the domestic cups and see how we've done in those taking a look at the domestic cups then in season number one and as you can see tottenham hotspur have been the absolute bane of our life knocking us out in the quarterfinal in both the fa cup and the carabao cup so no trophies won in the first season with chelsea we're going to take a quick look at the squad now see how they performed across the season and then it's time to jump in to season number two taking a look at the squad then in this first season and as you can see nicholas jackson does come away with 16 goals and five assists across all competitions christopher and kunku is in there with 14 goals and three assists which is very good considering he is injured for a couple of months at the start of the save moises caicedo is in there next with 10 goals and eight assists so there is actually only three players that do go into double digits in terms of goals this year in the squad Cole Palmer is in there with 9 goals, 6 assists. Raheem Sterling, 9 goals and 14 assists. So a very good season on the assist side from him. Let's jump into the transfer window in the second season and let's see who we can bring in to bolster this squad. Taking a look at the transfer window then for the second season with Chelsea and in typical Chelsea fashion, we have gone out and spent £100 million in the transfer window. The first man that we do sign is Victor Jokeres from Sporting for £45 million. Fantastic technical mental 
and physical stats on him. I'm sure we've all seen his stats before, so I'm not going to bore you with those. The second signing that we do bring in is Mark Gahey coming in from Palace for £44 million. He is a fantastic centre-back option on the game, so hopefully he can help us with those defensive stats moving forward. The third man that we brought in was actually Spartan coming in from Krasnodar for £9.75 million. This is actually a man I've never really seen on the game before, but he does seem to be pretty well-rounded when it comes to his technical, mental and physical stats. So hopefully it can be a good signing for us and his value is already around the £40 million mark as well. The fourth signing that we bring in is Luis Diaz, only £1.1 million loan fee in total for Luis Diaz for the season. And as we can see from his stats, his dribbling, first touch, technique, acceleration agility pace is all there so hopefully he can be a key man moving forward and gives us another option in those wide areas as well and the last man that we brought in was actually a player that has been on loan at chelsea before and that man is Jao felix again fantastic stats so hopefully it can be a key player moving forward when it comes to the transfers out you can see that we've actually managed to recoup 86 million pound in this transfer window 37 of that is romulo lukaku going out to Al Hittiad in the Saudi League. Lewis Hall was already in a range transfer, going out to Newcastle for £28 million. And then we have a couple of other players like Andrew and Marang Saar going out for small fees as well. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a quick look at the tactics because we do change them slightly to hopefully help us with the defensive aspect of the game. So let's jump straight into them and we'll show you this tactic for the second season. Taking a look at the tactic then, and as you can see, we are still running with that 4-2-3-1. However, we have changed a couple of roles in the tactic. The left and right back are now wing backs on support. The left centre back is just now a central defender on defensive. And both midfield players have changed to box to box on support and deep line playmaker on support as well. Taking a quick look at the player instructions, you can see on the forward, we have now got Tate Morris, dribble more and shoot more often. The right inside forward, we have shoot more often and tackle harder and exactly the same with the left inside forward as well. The attacking midfielder, we have take more risks, dribble more, shoot more often and tackle harder. Box to box midfielder, we have shoot less often and tackle harder. The deep line playmaker, we just set to tackle harder on there. The right wing back, we have take more risks and tackle harder. However, on the left wing back, we have take fewer risks and tackle harder. The central defender, we just have take fewer risks and tackle harder as well. And the ball playing defender, we do have dribble less, shoot more often and tackle harder. In terms of in possession, you can see that the width has now just dropped to fairly wide instead of being a step up. So we are dropping that down one. In terms of the passing directness, you can see we've dropped that up to slightly shorter as well. However, we are still working that ball into the box and still running at the defence. In transition, absolutely nothing changes. Still exactly the same as the first tactic that we set. And out of position is exactly the same as well. Keep, still keeping with that high press, line of engagement, the high defensive line, triggering the press much more often and preventing that short goalkeeper distribution. So what we're going to do now is we're going to send the rest of the season. Let's see how we've done in the Premier League, in the domestic cups, and let's see how those new signings have done for us as well. Let's catch you at the end. The first competition that we're going to take a look at then is the Premier League. And as you can see, in the second season, we've managed to take Chelsea to number one spot champions this year four points clear of manchester united in second place if we take a quick look at the stats you can see in terms of most goals we are top with 98 goals and 38 matches so 18 goals clear of any other team in the league if we take a quick look at the fewest conceded we are in there in sixth position with 41 goals conceded as well and in terms of possession 52 percent possession so slightly less possession than what we had last year if we take a quick look at the data hub, you can now see goals per game at 2.58, conceded per game at 1.08. So that is a massive drop compared to the last season's data hub as well. We're having nearly 17 shots per game and 45% of those shots being on target with a near enough 88% pass completion ratio as well. So changing that tactic has massively helped us. It took us from seventh place in the league the first place with better goals and a less conceded. So a fantastic season for us. Let's have a look at the rest of the competitions and see how we've done. You join me now then in the Europa League final where you can see we do go on to play at Bayer Leverkusen. Sterling does put us 1-0 up on the 28th minute, arriving at the back stick with a header. On the 42nd minute, Uncomku does exactly the same, a header into the bottom right-hand corner. Before the half-time whistle, 
And Kunku has a tidy little finish to get his second of the game to put us 3-0 up in the first half. And Xiao Felix goes through on the 60th minute to put us 4-0 up. And by that point, we've cemented the trophy. However, you've just seen by Leverkusen do get a consolation goal at the end of the game. So it is a 4-1 at the final whistle and Chelsea pick up their second trophy of the season. If we take a quick look at the stats then, 10 shots for Chelsea compared to Bayer Leverkusen's 9. Chelsea do have 6 shots on target compared to Bayer Leverkusen's 4 as well. So a pretty close game, closer than what the scoreline makes it out to be. However, I am very happy to pick up that second trophy of the season. Let's take a look at the rest of the domestic competitions and have we managed to do a treble? We'll soon find out. Not only have we won the Premier League and not only have we won the Europa League, we've actually gone on to win the Carabao Cup as well. So we do pick up a treble in our second season with Chelsea. We did want to play Arsenal in that final, beating them in 3-2. So a fantastic performance from the lads. When we look at the FA Cup, it is actually Arsenal who knock us out in the quarterfinal as well. However, to wrap up that second season, getting the treble is a fantastic second season for us. What we're going to do now is take a quick look at the squad see how they perform this year and let's see how those new transfers did for us throughout the season taking a look then at the squad at the end of the second season and as you can see the two new boys Victor Jokeresh and Luis Diaz have absolutely flew this year Jokeresh coming away with 29 goals and three assists across the season Luis Diaz with 22 goals and 16 assists just behind them we have Cole Palmer who only actually started 18 games this year but does come away with 19 goals and 14 assists we have christopher and kunku with 15 goals and 14 assists as well and raheem sterling with 12 goals and 12 assists so a fantastic performance from the attacking lads this year hopefully we can manage to keep all the Luis diaz moving into that third season but what we're going to do now is take a look at the transfer window in the third season and let's see who we've managed to bring in to bolster this squad again Transfer time now then for season number three and as you can see we went away and spent £137 million in this transfer window. £74 million of that was on Nico Williams who joins us from Bilbao. 23 years of age, he's got some very good mental and physical stats. Up to £96 million in transfer value and a four-star winger so hopefully going to be a very good signing for us. The second man that we brought in, we all know him, it's Antonio Silva coming in from Benfica. Again, fantastic mental and physical stats with that 16 tackling a four star center back with up to 97 million pounds in transfer value as well the third man that we brought in was kendry payes now i've not seen too much of this man in football manager however he looks like a pretty good all-round winger only 19 years of age and up to 50 million pounds in transfer value and the last man that we brought in was of course luis diaz he was on with us last year Again comes in on loan, this time no fee for him, so just paying his wages, but hopefully a fantastic signing if he can replicate the numbers that he put in last season. In terms of the transfers out then, you can see that Badi Ashil leaves to Atletico Madrid for £25.5 million, and the other key player that leaves is Ian Matson, who goes out to Atalanta for £15 million as well. So let's sim the rest of the season. Hopefully we can go back to back with the Premier League titles and let's see if we can pick up some more domestic trophies along the way as well. There's only one place we can start off and that is with the Premier League back to back champions. This time six points clear of second place Arsenal. If we take a quick look at the stats again, we can see most goals. Chelsea coming in again with 89 goals in 38 matches. If we look at the fewest conceded, we are in there in fourth position with only 39 goals conceded as well take a quick look at the data hub we can see 2.34 goals per game with conceded per game at only 1.03 so that has dropped again which is fantastic to see shots per game up at nearly 18 with 43 percent on target and an 87.5 pass completion ratio as well so a fantastic season the tactic is clearly working for us if we can pick up back-to-back -back premier leagues let's have a look at the rest of the competitions because we do actually go into the champions league this year and let's see how we've done champions league final time then and as you can see we do play psg in the final reese james with the ball into the box it doesn't get cleared and kunku puts it across the six yard box where marquinhos tries to clear however it does hit akimi and goes straight into the back of the net for the only goal of the game and chelsea do manage to walk away with that champions league trophy in the first season back in the competition in this rebuild now if we take a quick look at the stats you can see 
13 shots for Chelsea compared to PSG's 7, with 4 shots on target compared to PSG's 1. So we do massively deserve that game. Thankfully, we can manage to walk away unscathed in that final, beat PSG, Premier League, Champions League. Which trophy's next? Let's find out. Not only did we win one, but we actually went on to win two. We won the UEFA Super Cup and the FA Cup. So four trophies in the third season with Chelsea, Premier League, Champions League, Super Cup and FA Cup. And we was actually runners up in the Community Shield as well. So we could have been fired this year. But what a fantastic performance it's been from the lads. We're going to take a quick look at the squad then. Let's see how the lads have performed this year. And then it's time to jump in to season number four. Squad time then. And who's at the top of that list for goals? Of course, it's Victor Jokeres again. This time, 33 goals and four assists across the season. Christopher Nkunku with 21 goals and 10 assists. We have Sterling with 17 goals and 9 assists. Cole Palmer with 14 goals and 9 assists as well. Luis Diaz does feature in there. 10 goals, 4 assists. Not as impressive as last season, but still a decent return considering we didn't pay a loan fee for him. So Victor Jokeres is doing absolute bits at the moment. He is our main man. Let's go into transfer window number 4 and let's see how we've improved the squad. Jumping in to the transfer window in season number four. And looking at this, you would think Todd Bowley has only just come in and taken over Chelsea. However, that is not the case. We do go big. Otherwise, we go home. Simple as that. Jude Bellingham, £130 million. He was the first signing coming in from Real Madrid. If you look at the stats, we've probably all, well, we've definitely all seen him before. Technical, mental and physical stats. Unbelievable. Five-star midfielder, only 23 years of age and a value up to £186 million pounds as well. Second signing was Lukeba, who came in from Leipzig. He came in for £89 million. Pounds. Again, only 24 years of age. Mental and physical stats are unbelievable and a value up to £125 million pounds on him. The third signing that we brought in was Odrago, coming in from Schalke for £75 million. Pounds. Now, only 21 years of age, and you can see from his stats, he's got some unbelievable technical, mental and physical stats and a value up to £102 million as well. The fourth signing that we brought in was Gregor Kobel coming in from Borussia Dortmund. We needed to improve in the goalkeeper spot. We managed to spend £57 million on Kobel. It had to be done, simple as that. Luis Diaz, we do actually make permanent after two loan signings in the past two transfer windows. He comes in for £50 million. We've seen his stats before. Unbelievable stats on him, so happy to bring him in on a permanent deal. And the last man that we brought in was Lamine Yamal, coming in from Barcelona on loan for the season. So a fantastic transfer window. Yes, we did spend a lot of money, but that will hopefully secure that Premier League title and the Champions League title again this season. In terms of the transfers out, if we have a look at the fees, £97 million fee for Raheem Sterling. He does go out to the Saudi League. We managed to get £60 million in for Ben Chilwell. Again, out to the Saudi League. And the other man that goes out is Michaelo Mudrik going out to Real Madrid for £57 million. We do have a couple of other players going out in Solanina and Chalaba for £13.5 and £15 million as well. So we managed to recoup £245 million. So not really terrible in terms of net spend. But let's sim the rest of the season now. Let's have a look how we managed to do in that Premier League and Champions League. Can we win the Premier League three times back to back to back? Let's find out. We asked if we could do it back to back to back. And as you can see, of course, we have 90 points, which does secure that first place spot for us. Nine points more than second place, Manchester City. If we take a quick look at the stats, we can see most goals, 110 goals for Chelsea across 38 matches. Most possession, we are actually only down in eighth with 54% possession. And if we take a quick look at the fewest conceded, we are in 5th place with 45 goals conceded in 38 games. Take a quick look at the data hub. You can see 2.89 goals per game, which is fantastic in attack with this tactic. Conceded per game only at 1.18. Shots per game at 20. 45% of that is on target and an 87% pass completion as well. So fantastic stats for this tactic. If you are using a powerhouse team, I would definitely recommend using the tactic that we did show you in the second season 
Let's have a look at the rest of the competitions and let's see how we've done. Taking a look then at the rest of the competitions and as you can see, we do manage to pick up the Champions League trophy, the UEFA Super Cup trophy, the Carabao Cup trophy and the Community Shield trophy as well. So, five trophies in our fourth season with Chelsea. Premier League, Champions League, Super Cup, Carabao Cup, Community Shield. Unbelievable season number four from the boys. We're going to take a quick look at the squad Let's see how they perform this year. I'm expecting some unreal stats considering how we've managed to do throughout the domestic competitions. So let's take a quick look now. Is Jokeres still going to be the number one goal scorer for Chelsea? Let's find out. Taking a look at the squad then. We asked if Victor Jokeres was still going to be the top goal scorer for Chelsea. And of course he is. 33 goals across 57 appearances this season. This man is an unbelievable striker in Football Manager. You can see Luis Diaz in behind, 26 goals and 16 assists from him. Christopher Nkunku, 24 goals and 17 assists. We have Nico Williams, 13 goals and 11 assists. Newman Odrago coming in with 12 goals and 8 assists from that midfield spot. Nicholas Jackson is slipping in there with 12 goals and 5 assists as well. And the other new man, Jude Bellingham, £130 million spent on him, 10 goals and 12 assists, so a fantastic signing. He's had a fantastic year in his first year at Chelsea. It's time now to jump into that fifth and final season in charge of Chelsea. Can we win the Premier League again? Can we win the Champions League again? We're soon going to find out. This is going to be a ridiculous last season in this Chelsea rebuild. Before we jump into the final season of this unbelievable rebuild with Chelsea, I would just like to remind you that it is free to subscribe to the channel. So if you could do that, I would massively appreciate it. Please also leave a like rating on the video and get yourselves in the comments to let me know who you want to see in future rebuilds. Season five, let's go. As we all know by now, there is only one place we can start the season and that is with the transfers. Only one man brought in in the summer and that is Javi Simons coming in from PSG for a total of £87 million. Now, if you look at his stats, he is unbelievable with technical, mental and physical stats all through the roof. Unbelievable stats on him for a 25-year-old and a value of £97 million as well. In terms of transfers out, we do manage to recoup £47 million. Armando Brogia is one that goes out to Gladbach for £18.5 million. Romeo Olavia does go out to Lazio for £16.75 million. And the last key man is Robert Sanchez going out to Sporting for £11.5 million. Let's well, sim the rest of this season. How have we done in season number five? Well, as we have done for the past three seasons, we have managed to go on and win the Premier League. However, this season, it was a lot closer with Tottenham. As you can see, we both did finish on 80 points. However, we do manage to clinch that title on goal difference. If we take a quick look at the stats, you can see Chelsea again. Number one for most goals scored with 96 goals throughout the season. Possession, we do fit in there in seventh place with 54% possession. And the fewest goals conceded, we are in fourth place with 39 goals conceded throughout the season as well. If we take a quick look at the data hub then, you can see 2.53 goals per game with only a conceded per game of 1.03. So fantastic stats for us there. In terms of shots per game, we're at 18.24. However, we do only have 45.6% of those shots on target. Pass completion, 87% as well. So a fantastic season five when it comes to the data hub. Again, I'd just like to reiterate that this tactic is ridiculous if you are using a para house in Football Manager. So I definitely recommend it using it. Let's take a look at the rest of the competitions now and let's see how we've done. You join me then in the Champions League final and as you can see, 30 seconds into the game, Luis Diaz does go through one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, slots it past him into the bottom right to put us 1-0 up. Madueke then picks the ball up on the edge of the box in the 90th minute and he does rocket that into the top left-hand corner, which means we do manage to take away that Champions League trophy for the third season on the bounce, 2-0 to Bayern Munich. If we take a quick look at the stats then, 14 shots for Chelsea compared to 8 for Bayern Munich and 7 shots on target compared to 2 for Bayern Munich as well. So we do deserve the final. We look at the player ratings, Koble with an 8 rating in the final. So a fantastic performance from him. Let's have a look at the rest of the competitions now. Have we managed to bring on 5 trophies again? Of course we've managed to bring on 5 trophies again. This Chelsea team that we've built is absolutely ridiculous. We've gone on to win the Super Cup again, the English FA Cup, and the English Community Shield as well. So five trophies 
two seasons back to back, which is a ridiculous accomplishment. We're going to take a quick look at the history now and see how many trophies we've actually won in total across these five years of the rebuild. Taking a look then at the competitions we have gone on to win with Chelsea in this five year rebuild. And as you can see, it is absolutely ridiculous. We have won the Champions League three times. We've won the Premier League four times. We've won a Europa League, a handful of FA Cups, a couple of Super Cups as well. So a fantastic rebuild with this Chelsea squad. I'm sure we can say with 100% confidence that we have managed to rebuild Chelsea, the English and European giants. We're going to take a final look at the squad now. Let's see how we're ending this rebuild squad-wise and how they've done throughout the last season. Taking a look at the squad then, and as you can see, it is an absolutely ridiculous squad. With Jock Rose up top, we have Xavi Simons in that attacking midfield position. Bellingham, we have Okaba and Silva at centre-back as well. If we take a look at the rest of the squad, we've managed to keep all the players like Enzo Fernandez and Nkunku. We still have a Drago in there as well. Levi Colwell, who is a fantastic centre-back in real life, is staying in that squad as well. In terms of the goals, if we have a quick look, Jokeresh again this season, 29 goals, 24 goals for Luis Diaz. Nkunku comes away with 17. We have Nico Williams coming away with 13. Bellingham coming away with 13. And Xavi Simons coming away with 12 as well. So we are finishing off this rebuild with an unbelievable squad. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. Leave a like rating. Get yourselves in that comment section as well. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.